Stop worrying about the hit. Just focus on the swing and the hit's gonna come. So keep on swinging. What up guys, it's Marcus. It's been eight months now since I quit my job in New Zealand and it's been awesome. So I wanna leave you with three tips about mindset that are really gonna help you make the jump and stay over here and have a great life. I'm not really gonna talk about how to make money and all that stuff. This is more about how to use the brain. So we're gonna talk about the anti-fragile ego, self-compassion, and why defining your fears is more important than defining your goals. All right, first lesson that I would've given myself before I left was understanding how to develop a anti-fragile ego. Uh, so having a strong ego essentially is the capacity to keep your ego intact despite psychological stress, inner turmoil, and the changing conditions of the world around you. So when you're going from the comfort of your nine to five, uh, your friends, your family, your hobbies, your routine. Uh, when you're moving to the big unknown, which is you know becoming your own boss, traveling, not having your friends, not having your support network, you're definitely exposing yourself and your ego to a lot of external uh, situations and influences that can definitely knock you back. So understanding what an anti-fragile ego is is going to be a really important building block to make sure that uh, when you make the jump and when you take the leap, uh, to be a digital nomad or to be your own boss or to travel that it goes really well when you're at home uh, with your nine to five and your usual routine you know it's easy to be validated by the things that keep you comfortable you've got a good salary you've got friends who like you uh, you you don't really have to push your comfort zone much and it's easy to feel like the man when everything's going your way uh, when you come over here though things aren't always going to go your way so if you're relying on the validation of the comforts around you when you get over here and things don't go your way you know you're going to crumble down so you need to understand that not everything's going to go your way and there's going to be a lot of setbacks uh things outside your control um, and you need to understand how to not let that knock you down and that's part of having the anti-fragile ego yeah so building the anti-fragile ego uh when you make the jump and you move overseas it's going to be important for you to kind of define your morals your values your boundaries your interests and really define yourself when you're able to do that you're able to move through life on your own terms against your own scorecard. So rather than looking externally like you may have in the past, because you know yourself well and you have defined yourself, you can easily know if the action you're taking is, is in alignment with, with that and therefore you can kind of approve or disapprove of yourself. Rather than looking externally for the validation from your boss or your family, you're going to have to learn to do that internally uh, so that you can keep keep moving forward knowing that you're taking the right steps. A really helpful mindset that's helped me build a more anti-fragile ego is separating what I can and can't control and then having the courage to take the action that is in my control that is towards the goal or the outcome that I want. So it's all well and good knowing what the right action is to take but you're going to need to have the courage to do it. So you're going to feel that heightened sense of emotion in your stomach um, and you're going to have to push past that but we'll talk about that uh, and one of the next tips, which is all about having self-compassion. All right, here's a really good quote uh, from Ray Dalio's book, Principles. It says, it's not about the hit, it's about the swing. So basically what that means is stop worrying about the hit. Just focus on the swing and the hit's going to come. Right, I'll give you an example that I have to deal with probably on a monthly basis, and that's clients cancelling. So, you know, if the client cancels, I'm so used to it now that I know that I'm going to feel anxious for about 20 minutes. I'm going to probably panic a little bit, think about going home, think about everything failing. Uh, but what we what I've learned to do now is just accept that emotion, let it come up, and know that it's going to go away. And then we just take the next best move on the chessboard. All right, second lesson and point is all about having self-compassion. So that's treating yourself like a best friend. You know, everyone's we're really nice to our best friends when they've got problems and stuff like that. But when it comes to our own mind and how we talk to ourselves, it's usually a very different scenario. You know, I need to make more money, or I need to work harder, or I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have done that. You need to learn, and it takes time, to talk to yourself like you would a best friend. All right, two quick things you can do to help build this mindset of self-compassion if it doesn't come naturally for you. For me, I was brought up in a very critical uh, kind of household where you had to go to uni, or if you didn't get good grades, then you weren't of value, basically. You know, you need to go get a house, you need to have, go get a wife, and all that kind of stuff, and if, if, if you don't do it, then you're not, you're not worthy of, of love, basically. Uh, we don't want that for ourselves because it's just going to make things a lot harder than they need to be. 
if we can just show up with kindness um, and without criticism when we make a mistake, then the rate at which we can grow is going to be a lot faster and we're going to be able to push our comfort zone at a more accelerated rate. So yeah, don't forget to be kind to yourself. Uh, don't be overly critical of yourself when you make mistakes because mistakes essentially is, is where you learn. So if you're overly critical with, with yourself, you're just going to encumber yourself from taking that action. And when you feel that uncomfortable feeling in your stomach, whether it's talking to someone, making a new friend, or going on a sales call, it's it's just going to inflate those feelings rather than just acknowledging that, yeah, this is this is going to be a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit out, outside of my comfort zone, but just like I would say to a best friend, I'm going to do my best and whatever happens is going to be alright. So you've made the jump, you're going to come over, you know, you're going to feel some strong emotions, especially when it comes to those more uncomfortable situations. You're probably going to feel your body start seizing up, uh, feeling anxious, feeling those butterflies in your stomach, depending on what you're doing. Even for me, when I first touched down in Vietnam, I was anxious to leave the house, you know. I had quit my job, I had my own business, I had social anxiety at that point because all I did was just work uh, before I left New Zealand to get my business going and I'm in one of the busiest places uh, in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia, Ho Chi Minh. So the amount of emotions I was feeling just leaving the house was, was pretty fucking intense. So a big, big part of the self-compassion is feeling your emotions because if you don't feel or accept your emotions you're essentially denying a part of yourself and those repressed emotions that you're pushing away or running from are just going to run you subconsciously so you need to sit with yourself, you need to meditate, you need to learn to be self-compassionate towards the emotions you're feeling when you create a better relationship with how you feel those emotions aren't going to control you as much as they did in the past you're going to accept them, you're going to acknowledge them and then you're going to go forward with the best next move on the chessboard right, last point is all about fear setting and rather than defining our goals defining what the worst case scenario might look like. This is something that I actually did before I came, which really helped me make the jump. And if you haven't done this yourself, I definitely recommend it. So essentially what fear setting is, is saying, hey, what's what's gonna be the worst thing that happens if this doesn't work out? That might be, I need to go back home. I need to go get another job, go get another nine to five. I need to go tell everyone that it didn't work out. But if you have self-compassion, that wouldn't be a problem because you did the best you could, right? You don't have to make this work the first time. You know, in the back of my head, this all could turn to shit, but I'm eight months in now and I've proved so much to myself that I can do this for eight months. I can make more money than my corporate job working two days a week in a new country with no one but myself. And if it all turns to shit, then I'm gonna go back home, get another nine to five, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back out here but I'll be coming out with more knowledge, more skills, and more confidence. So this isn't life or death. Yeah, give it the best shot you've got. Be self-compassionate and be self-confident, and that will come with time. But at the end of the day, you can always go back and you can always try again. If you truly know that this is the life that you want and you do want a life of freedom and travel, and you don't want to be in the matrix with a nine to five, waiting until you're 65 to enjoy your life, then it's okay, go easy on yourself, make the jump, do the best you can, and if you need to, you can always go back home, start saving again, start building an income again. All right, guys, those are the three tips. After being over here for eight months, everything's gone really well. I just want to leave you with uh, some general advice that includes kind of business savings as well, because we only really talked about the mindset here, but save as much as you can. Start building an online income now. Book your ticket because you need to make a pact with yourself that this is going to happen otherwise you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life uh, and after that yeah make the jump and build the mindset and take these three tips they'll really help you along the journey let's go